What's up guys and welcome back to LSJ TV. What's going on with this light? But anyway, what's up guys and welcome back to LSJ TV. Now the eagle-eyed viewers that watch every single video, thank you to you guys and welcome back as always. will notice that there isn't a mix at the start of this video and that is because I haven't done anything. I've been sick. So I've been sick for the past few days, unfortunately guys, and it has meant that I've not been able to get out and do stuff and film stuff and go to the gym like I normally would uh, to make these kinds of videos. So I decided to turn this into a positive instead of focusing on the dreary, negatives, I've been ill kind of stuff and turn it into a YouTube video. As you guys can see from the title, the title of today's video is Should You Train When You're Sick? So guys, before I get into this properly, what I want to say is that I am not a GP, I'm not a doctor, I'm not any, I'm not trained in any way, shape or form to tell you whether you should train or not when you're ill, but everything I will say will be based off my experience and how I feel in the given situation. So I just felt the need to say that, so just take everything I say with a pinch of salt. So the first thing I'm going to say is a little bit weird and so bear with me. Are you really sick? What you guys have to be able to do is tell the difference between sickness and having a little bit of a blocked nose. Like, are you really going to stop yourself from achieving those goals that you set, those, those New Year's resolutions that you might be about to set, or the ones that you set from January, or just your short-term goals in general? Are you going to let having a little bit of a blocked nose, or whatever it may be, stop yourself from doing that? Probably not. I mean, yeah, absolutely, like having a blocked nose may hinder you training properly, because at the end of the day, if you have a blocked nose, you can't breathe like you normally can. You, you imagine that I, I tend to breathe out my mouth when I'm, when I'm training anyway, but that's just me. And again, you have to know within your own body whether that is okay, whether having a blocked nose would hinder your training to the point of it being, well, pointless, but all the while maintaining the idea that if you aren't going just because you have a blocked nose and it's almost just being used as an excuse, then you are only hindering yourself, not anybody else. So just bear that in mind if, if that is the case. For me to not go to the gym, it actually takes a hell of a lot. Like I, it's, I love it, it's my favorite part of the day, it's my passion, I, like, I get to make these videos because of it as well, all at the same time. All of those things kind of mean that for me to not go to the gym, it takes a lot and it takes something pretty big and something pretty major for me to not go. In fact, quite a lot of the time, my day actually ends up revolving around it one way or another in terms of I love it my I love it so much it's my favorite thing to do that I kind of plan my day as carefully as I can so that I do still have that couple of hours spare that I can still go and work out so for the past few days even though I love it so much my body has been telling me that it's had enough it needs a rest and that I'm ill I'm not 100% and that it's not ideal especially for me but it is what it is and I needed that couple of days rest. Because at the end of the day, guys, as far as I see it, that's my body telling me that it's had enough. You know, I've been pushing really hard lately in the gym and, and regardless of the reason why you're ill, whether it's because you've been stressed, you've moved somewhere, maybe, maybe you've moved back to uni or you've moved home from uni or there's just been a big change in your life. Maybe you've had a kid or like anything like that can lower your immune system because you're a little bit stressed and can make you a little bit more prone, let's say, to picking up these kinds of things, especially this time of year. Now, I'm not saying that that's happened to me. I mean, I'm quite lucky in terms of the fact that I don't get sick very often. Um, so I'm kind of just putting this down to oh, it's just one of those things. And, you know, I haven't been sick for a long time. Yeah, OK, may maybe I am just sick. You know, I've just got to accept that. So if you search the internet for these kind of things, this kind of, this kind of question and you're looking for answers, like whether you should go to the gym or not, you'll probably find one of, well, you'll probably find two common answers. One will probably be that rest days are for pussies and that you should get your ass down to the gym. And the second will be, ah, oh, you know what, you feel really, really bad today and so you should probably sleep for six weeks until you've recovered and do absolutely nothing. Now, I don't really agree with either of those, to be honest with you. I, one, because I think rest is a necessity, 
um, but not six weeks worth of rest. Um, but your body needs a rest whether you are 100%, whether you're feeling great or whether you're ill, you know, like I have been over the past few days. And the second reason I disagree with that is because you don't need to do absolutely nothing just because you've got a cold. And that is what a lot of people on the internet will tell you to do. That's just unproductive. So for me, what I like to do is just kind of judge it on the independent situation. It can vary from one illness to another or even from one day to another. Like if I've just got a little bit of a blocked nose, then yeah, I'm probably going to be okay, but if I'm feeling fuzzy head, I've got, I don't know, chest pains or something like that, and it's sort of come out of nowhere, then maybe I'll have to start considering skipping a session or two. So let's just take a second just to think how you can stop, maybe prevent those things in the first place, and if the bug does get you down, maybe how you can get over it just a little bit quicker. Tip number one would have to go at the top, and trust me, this has to, this has to 1,000% go at the top because it is powerful, trust me. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. That might sound really blunt, really brutal, and just not very nice, but the reality is your brain is very, very powerful. Your brain is one of the most, if not the most powerful tool you have. Have you ever been a kid and told yourself that you didn't want to go to school, so you pretended to be sick? and then you ended up being sick, purely because your brain has, has been programmed or whatever you've managed to do, you've convinced yourself that you physically are sick and so your body then goes into that hibernation mode. Do you guys, let me know in the comment section down below if you've ever had that before. I definitely have once or twice as a child and that is because of brain power. You are telling yourself you are ill, you're playing that role if you like, and then you physically end up being ill. So if you, I, I prefer to reverse it now in sort of my adult life, I'm 20 now, I tell myself that I'm not, that I'm not ill. Or that, you know, if I'm aware of how bad it is, I'm like, yeah, but I'll, I'll you know what, I'll be all right in a couple of days. Like, I'll be able to get up and about tomorrow, I'll just get some good sleep tonight. Your brain is very, very powerful, guys. Do not let it get you down. Tip number two would definitely have to be sleep. This is essential, as you guys know, especially if you are into the gym, it's essential whether you are 100% healthy or whether you feel ill. Just maybe, I don't know, go to bed a little bit earlier or wake up a little bit later if it's a weekend, you know, treat yourself to a little bit of a lion. If you are feeling ill, then you you are gonna to need to recover. So let yourself, let your body have that sleep in order to do so. Tip number three would be to drink lots of water. Now as you guys can see at the start of the video, I actually had two shakers on here. In the process of filming this, in about 10 minutes, uh, if that, probably about five minutes of me speaking to you guys just briefly, I've actually drank 500 milliliters of my other lean shaker, the brand new one, um, and that is gone. That is completely empty. That's in my room from the pre from the previous clips And now I'm starting on this one I probably drink at least four to five liters of water every single day just because hydration is key again Whether you are 100% healthy or whether you are not feeling too great it, Try and get as much water in it as you possibly can that for me over the past couple of days has been hindered a little bit Because I've been sleeping a lot allowing myself to recover, but that has hindered my hydration So what I'm just trying to do drink a little bit more if not extra than what I normally would. Just trying to get as much water in my body as possible just to help to flush out whatever the hell it was that made me feel so crappy over the past couple of days. So that is definitely tip number three. So the fourth and final tip for when you feel sick over these winter months would be to be honest. You don't have to spurt out any random crap to anyone around you. It's only yourself and in yourself you know exactly how you feel. You can tell anyone, I can tell anyone I feel 100% right now. Like, I don't. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I don't feel 100% yet. I'm not ready to go back to the gym. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. But you have to be honest. And the reason I say that is purely because you're only going to hinder your own progress. It doesn't affect anybody else if you don't go to the gym. So you don't have to convince them the reasons why you're not going. Be honest within yourself and only you know in your own body whether you are capable of going to the gym or not. Imagine if I was going to the gym with Jake and then I pulled out and he still went ahead and trained chest. Like, that's fine. The, like, affect, affect me, yes, affect my progress because I'm ill. But imagine if I did that just because I didn't want to go. If you're having to come up with excuses as to why you can't go to the gym and they're not actually real excuses, then you just kind of maybe have to consider that the fitness kind of lifestyle as it gets called Maybe it's just not for you. Especially, especially you students. So that's that guys, no gym footage in today's video for obvious reasons. Um, you just have to know within your own body whether you are capable enough or not. 
going to the gym, and if not, then you can always consult a professional. There's no harm and no shame in that whatsoever, guys. This time, I felt it was just a little bit too much strain on my body, and to be honest, I just, it was one of those where I was all achy, and, and you know, I just, just couldn't function my body properly and so it wasn't worth me going to the gym especially on the very limited food I had. To be honest I hope it hasn't hindered the bulk too much like a couple days without much food maybe have affected my strength and my lifts and everything so it might take me a week or so to get back into it maybe I'll have a kind of increment I, I don't know stay tuned for the next vlog to see what I do with my training. But for now though I'm gonna go edit this video and get some sleep. Tip number two or three I pretty one of the one of the tips anyway get a good night's sleep so I'll be doing that tonight for sure. Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section down below guys. I'll be sure to get back to you as always. Hopefully I'll be hitting that, well I will be hitting that 100 kg bench press soon. Very, very soon. I'll be hitting it in the home gym with two blue plates as always promised. I will be waiting for the challenge. Stay tuned for Sunday's video guys. Drop this one a like if you did enjoy it. Comment down below and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. As always remember, no regrets. I'll see you guys in the next video.